What's going on everybody? It's Eric Ray with the back here and in today's video I'm gonna be going over the 20 new things that were added to Madden 20 the 20 biggest differences from Madden 19 to Madden 20 now if you've been around my channel lately watching most of the videos Then you've heard me talk about most of these at length already There may be a few in here that you uh, haven't heard about yet But for the most part you've probably heard of these this is a video that I do every year for the new people that are coming in Right as the game is about to be launching to decide if they want to buy the game or not to see if some of the things that they wanted are the those things now in the game or are they still not there so without further ado here is my list of the 20 biggest things that were added to the game this year keep in mind some of these are old features that have been brought back but they are new in terms of they were not in the previous version of the game number one on the list is real player motion 2.0 Last year in Madden 19 we got the original real player motion that was still very buggy and not polished. The real player motion 2.0 this year feels like they completely overhauled it and did it the right way. So much smoother, so much more responsive, running the ball, changing direction, clicking on, on defense and making the plays that you need to make. It's honestly the best change about the game in my opinion and something that you're going to notice literally from the first kickoff of the game the second you touch the ball. Number two on the list is the scenario engine. This is something for franchise mode and career mode. It presents you with scenarios that you have to play through that can change the dynamic of the franchise. So if you're a coach, you know, coordinators will approach you and say, hey, you know, we're going up against a certain player this week. We need a game plan for him. And you'll have goals tied to that and also XP tied to it if you complete the goal. If you're an owner, you can get approached by players that maybe aren't happy. They don't aren't getting enough playing time or you know, aren't getting the ball enough. You can, if you're a player, you get approached by your coach or your owner for certain things that you need to do, certain achievements you need to hit. And uh, it's definitely something that I hope they continue to update and build upon because right now from the early version that I played, the beta, it felt kind of bland, but the potential is definitely there if they want to keep building it out, which they said that they want to do. Number three on the list is superstar abilities. This is going to make the superstar players actually feel special in Madden for once. So you have regular superstar players that get abilities based on their real life skills. So Julian Edelman in the slot, he's going to run better routes in the slot. You're going to see a noticeable difference. His catch in traffic will be better in the slot because that's kind of how he performs in real life. Mahomes is going to have better accuracy when throwing on the run because that's what he does in real life. Now you also have something that's called X Factor players. These are the 50 best players in the league and they also have superstar abilities but they also have what's called an x factor ability which allows them to get in the zone if they you know meet a certain criteria in the game so if they complete so many passes or make you know so many big runs they can get in the zone and that kind of unlocks special maybe animations or abilities that they can pull off once they reach that point honestly one of my favorite parts about the game this year it makes gameplay feel fun more strategic and it makes the special players undoubtedly feel like they're better than the regular guys and the lower tier guys Number four on the list is the Pro Bowl is finally back. Yes, obviously this is an old feature, but it has not been in any of the Madden games on this gen. It's finally back for franchise mode. You can also just do it and play now if you want. Definitely a lot of fun, especially with the abilities in the Pro Bowl. You have tons of people with abilities because it's all the best players in the league. So a lot of franchise guys were, you know, wanting that back for a while now, and it is back in Madden 20. Number five on the list are signature animations. Mainly signature throwing motions and some signature running styles for players. This makes the players more authentic. So players like Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, Tom Brady, <coughs> Phillip Rivers, Drew Brees. These guys have their signature throwing motions in the game. And it, when you play with them, it feels like you're really playing with them. The way they throw the ball, the things that they do in real life, they do in the game. The same is for some of the running animations. They didn't do as many with the runners, but like I know Cam Newton's got his signature running animation in the game. Alvin Kamara has his. And when you're running with these guys, it, it really looks like them running. And I know that they want to keep building upon this. Definitely uh, glad that they started that this year, mainly with the quarterbacks. But we do have, like I said, some with the runners as well. Number six on the list is the rating spread. Something a lot of people have wanted for a while. They finally have stretched out the ratings and redid their overall formula. So now, again, this further makes the better players feel better. You're going to notice specifically in the 80 to 90 overall range, you're going to see a lot less players in that range this year. So guys that were mid 80s last year, some of those guys might be high 70s now. And guys that were, you know, mid 70s are going to be like mid 60s to high 60s now. And in franchise mode specifically, you're going to have certain situations where you might have a couple starting spots on your team with a guy who's like in the high 50s or mid 60s because the ratings have been so much more stretched out now that 
you know, what equaled an 80 overall last year might equal a 75 overall this year. So kind of glad they've done that. It definitely makes those 90 plus guys feel better. And it's definitely, it's in terms of kind of improving players and franchise, developing them, gives you more of a challenge to develop those young players. Number seven on the list is they have brought back career mode and it is called face of the franchise. Now the downside to this is you can only be a quarterback. It does not unlock all positions. You can still do the regular career mode or superstar mode and franchise mode where you pick a player but you just don't get none of the extra stuff with the qb face of the franchise career mode you get the pre-draft stuff where you get to play in college do the uh, combine you get to you know meet with gms and coaches and stuff like that get drafted the scenario engine affects certain decisions you make where you can be drafted how you perform determines where you can be drafted and things like that and then you go into franchise mode with the scenario engine and that kind of drives your story about you know where you go as you play through your seasons with your team so it is back it's limited to quarterback but it's you know wasn't in the game last year i'm glad that they've at least added it back this year and are looking to build upon it number eight on the list are rpos also known as run pass options these are finally in the game something that people really wanted last year didn't get in mad 19 but it is here for mad 20 over 200 of them in the game there's some in every playbook it really adds another layer to gameplay and strategy and it's a lot of fun to use to mix those in definitely a little bit of a learning curve with them but once you get it down after you know it might take you an hour or so to really kind of get some of these down and then after that it's just really fun to use them in game number nine on the list is all of the new jet sweep plays so they overhauled this as well in the past maddens you've seen maybe a couple jet sweep plays in the game but this year they really change this to match what you see in real life not just a jet sweep where you can hand it off to the receiver who's in motion but you can do the jet sweep touch pass that we see so many teams do now like the bears do it a lot the chiefs do it a lot to tyree kill you also have a lot of play actions off the jet sweeps now some where you're actually faking it to the wide receiver who's in motion and then also faking it to the running back too and then you have multiple guys going out on routes honestly one of the most fun things about the gameplay to me because these are in most playbooks some playbooks have a lot more than others like the rams and the raiders but it just really opens up the play calling and it's a lot of fun and it really keeps the defense on their toes number 10 on the list is the philly special has been added again that was something people really wanted last year and they didn't get in the game it's here this year it's in all of the playbooks of teams that have run this so obviously the eagles playbook it's in the browns playbook it should be in others like the bears as well there's some other teams that have run the same uh you know trick play there's also a, fa a fake philly special which is a run version of the play where you hand it off to one of the guys in the backfield so kind of keeps the defense on their toes they're not sure which play you're running it's uh not something you're probably going to use a whole lot because it, it is a little bit limited but it is fun to pull out and it's nice that they finally put that in the game number 11 on the list are special running back animations now this one i really enjoy because now the elite running backs this further helps them stand out from the lower to mid-tier running back. So once you get like a certain juke rating, a certain spin, hurdle, stiff arm rating, let's just say it's 90 plus. I'm not sure what it is, but let's just for the sake of this video say it's like 90 plus. Then you unlock special animation. So like specifically Melvin Gordon is somebody, when you play with a Melvin Gordon, he's going to have different juke animations than like a guy like maybe Jordan Howard because he has a higher juke and you'll see these juke animations. Alvin Kamara has better juke animations and you see it with these elite guys, better spins, better hurdles. Whereas in past Maddens, outside of the speed rating, pretty much everybody had access to the same, you know, the, the same juke spins, hurdles, and stiff arms. That's not the case anymore. This further makes those top tier backs really stand out and the new animations are very very cool they're well done they're very clean they're not really like clunky or overpowered they just they really really work well if you if you set a guy up now number 12 on the list is something that is called fast to fun so what this is is they've kind of taken some of the prolonged pre and post play stuff out of the game so when you break the huddle now after calling a play you'll get to the line and you can snap the ball within five seconds last year it was about eight seconds so they've cut out some of that time it really depends on which side of the line you fall on as to whether or not you like this me i like it because i just want to get back into the game quicker but for people that are bigger on the immersion they like watching the guy walk further up to the line after breaking the huddle to me once you play a game or two you're not even really going to notice that it's a thing anymore it's just going to kind of feel natural that's my opinion of it 
but I can see both sides of this. Uh, same thing, like the post play stuff's a little bit shorter. You can kind of get out of it quicker, get back to your play call screen, and then get back to the line. This also affects no huddle. You can snap it three seconds after no huddling now because your guys are going to pretty much instantly line up, and you're only going to have to wait three seconds to snap the ball. This one I could see being a little problematic for sure, so maybe they should increase that, but... It is a, a difference to the game, but whether or not it's a good or bad change is really up to the type of player you are. Number 13 on the list, are they made ball trajectory accurate? Finally, one of the biggest problems with this series is that ball trajectory was very bad. The ball came out too fast and too low to where you can snatch it out of thin air with a linebacker that was 10 yards in front of the landing spot. Now they have accurate ball trajectory. You can get the ball over those defenders like the linebackers in the middle of the field. You have to really be up on a guy to get a pick now. You can't pick it off from far away. It really opens up a lot more formations, a lot more route combinations. You can really lead receivers to the open area because you get more you know, arc on the ball, more accurate trajectories coming out of the QB's hand. Honestly, one of the better parts of the gameplay this year that because now it really that along with all the other new stuff that was added, this really opens up. You know offenses all together because you're, you're able to do things now that you just weren't able to do in the past number 14 on the list are college teams kind of a smaller thing because it's only in the face of the franchise mode but you can play as about i want to say 10 college teams now i'll have the list up on the screen but it, it's just like a little bit of a taste of ncaa football it's fun to have that in madden because we don't have the ncaa game anymore i know that they're trying to bring it back they want to but it's kind of maybe still a long shot right now but the fact that we can still play with some college teams in the current Madden and kind of have an updated look of what it would feel like, I think that's a fun thing that people will like about the game, but it is tied to the career mode. Number 15 on the list is they added a new scoreboard, and this was, without a doubt, the biggest complaint the game had last year, whether you want to believe that or not. Across YouTube, Reddit, forums, social media, the scoreboard got the most complaints out of anything in the game. Even though the gameplay was bad, even though franchise still lacked depth, the scoreboard was the thing that people were the most frustrated with because it had been the same scoreboard for, I believe, the third straight year, pretty much. They updated this year. It's a brand new, kind of mo more modern scoreboard, so that was added to the game. If that's something you're interested in, well, there you go. You got your new scoreboard. Number 16 on the list is the introduction of Ultimate Team Missions. This is what you're going to see when you enter Ultimate Team this year. Kind of something that helps both the new player and even the hardcore player kind of walk you through what's new and what you need to do to obtain maybe the new players that have just come out or about the new promos that just came out. It'll tell you which challenges you have to play. It'll tell you which sets you have to complete. And definitely is good for kind of helping the new Ultimate Team user because when you jump into Ultimate Team for your first time ever, it can be very overwhelming. So the new missions is going to really help walk you through what you need to do and kind of your quickest path to obtaining what you want to obtain number 17 on the list are ultimate challenges so what we had previously was known as solo challenges but the reason they're called ultimate challenges now is because you can now play them with a friend you don't have to play them solo you can still play them solo but you can now team up with a friend and do them co-op style which uh, it really just depends on the type of player you have some people will love this some people will feel like it's useless because some people just look at solo challenges it's just something to grind to get through and get the rewards, but other people like playing the solo challenges to use their team. And if you're that person, you might like the co-op style that you can now do with ultimate challenges. Number 18 on the list is the next challenge option. Now, this is something that Mutt fans have probably wanted the most out of almost anything the past few years. So when you play a solo string, let's say, you might have 20 solos to complete. You finish one, you complete it, then you have to back out, go back to the menu, and then load into the new challenge. Now you don't have to do that. When you complete a challenge, there's an option to go to the next solo challenge. Now to some of you, this might not be a big deal, but when I tell you the, the amount of time this is going to save for people that like to grind through those challenges to get the rewards, if you have a solo string, like I said, of 20 games, that can maybe take you an hour, hour and a half to complete. This is going to knock, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes in some cases off of that time because you can simply load right into the next challenge without having to back all the way out to the loading screen and then load into a brand new challenge. This is going to get you to the next one much quicker and it's one of my favorite things that they added to the game. Seems like a small thing, but something that can really save you a lot of time. Number 19 on the list are Mutt Archetypes. So we saw the Archetype system get added to Franchise last year, but now they added it to Ultimate Team, which is really almost even better for Ultimate Team because 
in prior years, you could put abilities on players no matter what. You can put pocket passer abilities on someone like Lamar Jackson, and you could put, if you really wanted to, if there was a scrambling type ability, you could put that on a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees. Now, you can't do that. The abilities that you want to put on your mutt players have to fit within the archetype, so you can't have just things that a player you can't have abilities on a player that don't fit the way he plays in real life which I think is great because that's going to make it a little bit more challenging a little bit more strategic and you can't just have the best of every world with any player that you choose and number 20 the last thing on the list is they added signature first down and sack celebrations so last year they did a big you know upgrade to celebrations like touchdown celebrations overall and team celebrations but the sack and the first down celebrations you didn't really see much of them and they were pretty much all the same now you're going to see guys do their signature celebrations. Like Michael Thomas, when he gets a first down, he's going to flex. When Zeke gets a first down, he's going to do his eat celebration. When these guys get their sacks, the ones that have their signature like sack dances, you know, Von Miller is one of those guys. You know, a lot of these guys do it. They're going to do those celebrations in game, which just adds more immersion. It's just a nice touch to see players doing in the game what they do on Sundays. That's what people always want to see when they play a game of Madden. So those are the 20 new things that were added this year. Let me know below, are you excited about any of these things? Are you not excited for some of them? Do you feel like there's still some big things that they didn't touch that they absolutely needed to? Let me know below, and as always, I will see you guys next time.